I am so glad you're here because today we're diving into the fascinating world of amino acid, the building blocks of life itself. We're going to be learning about the structure and classification of the 20 naturally occurring amino acids as well as what happens to the side chains as you change the pH. And stick around to the end because I have some practice problems that should help for your next exam. Amino acids are the fundamental units that make up the proteins in living systems. All of amino acids consist of a very similar structure. At the center is a carbon which we call the alpha carbon that is always attached to a carboxyl group or a carboxylic acid, a single hydrogen atom, and an amino functional group. The difference between all of the 20 amino acids is what is called the R group, which is on the other side of the carbon. The properties of amino acids largely depend on the nature of the R group side chain on amino acids. These side chains can be classified into four different groups, one of which is nonpolar, polar, acidic, and basic. The structure of those 20 amino acids are shown on the screen, together with the accepted three-letter abbreviation and one-letter abbreviation for each amino acid. Except for glycine, whose R group side chain is just another hydrogen atom, all of these amino acids are chiral, and typically nature employs only one enantiomer of each. The amino acids primarily observed in nature are called L amino acids because their fissure projections resemble the fissure projection of L glyceraldehyde. But what happens to these amino acids when we change the pH? Remember that amino acids contain functional groups like an amino group and a carboxylate group. The amino group can act as a base and the carboxyl group can act as an acid. These functional groups play an important role in the protonation state of amino acids. Importantly remember that the R side chains can also be either acidic or basic and therefore the pH is going to determine what level of protonation those side chains are as well. Recall that at low pHs this means that you're under acidic conditions. Therefore, we would expect that the amino group at the bottom of this structure would also be protonated to leave behind an NH3+. At high pHs, remember that that means a basic condition. I would expect then that under basic conditions that the carboxylic acid group would also be deprotonated and this would mean that we have formed another type of ion. Since these functional groups can exist as protonated and deprotonated, this is an example of a type of compound which we call zwitter ionic, meaning that you have a compound that is capable of existing in multiple ionic states because we can have a protonated amino group and a deprotonated carboxylic acid. Importantly also, remember that the R group side chain can also exist in, as an acidic functional group or a basic functional group. This means we need to consider the relative pKa values of each of these functional groups when determining the protonation state at given pHs. Each of the highlighted protons has its own unique pKa value, often called pKa1 and pKa2. Amino acids that contain either acidic or basic groups have a third pKa value associated with the side chain. These are shown currently on the screen in the table. The pKa values for most carboxylic acids are typically going to be in the range of 2 to 3. This means that at physiological pH, it's likely that our carboxylic acids are going to exist in the deprotonated form. And that's because at physiological pH, you're around 7.4, so the human body is around pH 7.4. This means then that typically the carboxylic acid groups and amino acids inside of our body are deprotonated. And this is because you will get deprotonation at pH levels that are greater than the pKa values of the functional groups. The pKa values for amino groups tend to be around 9 to 10. This means, again, at physiological pH, which is around 7.4, that at physiological pH, our amino group is actually going to be completely protonated and form an ammonium group. Therefore, in physiological pHs, amino acids actually are completely zwitterionic, where the carboxylate group is deprotonated and the amino group is completely protonated, generating a species which has two ionic sections or two ionic functional groups on each amino acid. Now let's try some practice problems that resemble questions that you might expect to see on an exam. Pause the video, try these problems independently, and then resume the video to check my solutions.
For lysine, we have three functional groups that we need to consider as to their relative protonation state at a given pH. This is because all amino acids have the amine functional group and a carboxylic acid, which can exist in various protonation states. But there's also a basic side chain on lysine, which is another amine group. In this question, you were told that the pH is about 9.5. Importantly, the pKa of carboxylic acids tend to be around 2 to 3. This would mean that we would expect that this carboxylic group to actually be deprotonated since the pH is greater greater than the pKa. The pKa of the amine group, or the pKa2 for lysine, is actually around 8.95, and again that's the pKa value. Since the pH is greater than that, we would not expect this amine functional group to be protonated. Again, that's because the pH is greater than the pKa, which means that the functional group will exist in its basic form. Importantly though, for the amine side chain, the pKa of this aliphatic amine is actually around 10.5. And notice that the pKH is lower than the pKa. And since the pH is lower, this means that it's in a more acidic environment than the pKa of the amine functional group on the side chain. And since it is at a lower pH, this means that the amine is actually going to exist in its protonated form. So we would expect that just this amine would be protonated, the carboxylic acid group would be deprotonated, and the amine functional group would just exist as the normal amine group. Therefore, we can redraw this structure as what it would look like at physiological pH, and that is going to reflect what we just came up with here, which is where the side chain amine is fully protonated, the amine at the alpha carbon is not protonated, and the carboxylic acid functional group has been deprotonated. This is a common exam question that you'll see both in organic chemistry, biochemistry, and definitely on the MCAT. Remember that a zwitter ion, pr pronounced zwitter, is any time you have a net neutral compound that exhibits opposite charges at different functional groups. So for valine, I need to know that the carboxylic acid has been deprotonated, the alpha carbon contains an amine group which has been fully protonated to create a positive charge, and valine is one of those aliphatic functional groups on the R chain which are completely nonpolar. They don't have a basic or acidic functional group. It is just a carbon chain. In fact, it is an isopropyl group. So for that reason, this would be this vitter ionic structure of valine, and again, vitter ion because it has a fully protonated amine group at the alpha carbon and a fully deprotonated carboxylic acid, giving us opposite charges that generate a net neutral compound. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more chemistry content. If you have any questions at all about amino acids or anything else related to chemistry, drop it as a comment down below and I'll be happy to help you out. I'll see you in the next video.